those early days were emotionally very draining. Um, not not knowing, not knowing, not being able to control anything, you know, not even being able to uh, sort out in your mind how you could going to cope because you just didn't know and you knew nobody else knew either. I mean, I think it was scary for everyone, but it was more scary because no one knew whether we would be okay if we got it. So it, it just heightened it. And I think it then made my family really worried because you know, they just thought, oh, it's bad enough if you get it, but if, you, if mum gets it, that, that might be the end. So it, it, those first, well, probably a few months, really, um, were, were very difficult, were very scary. Um, and then the family were able to go out for walks, and I remember that very clearly. They'd all go out for a walk, and I felt like a prisoner because I was just walking around my garden because they said, you really must get some fresh air. You really must go out. I can't walk very far anyway, so I couldn't have done the walks with them. But just being told you shouldn't even be out is, is quite scary in itself. Um, and I remember our next door neighbor, he, he was quite vulnerable as well. And so often either in the mornings or the afternoons, we would be walking in the garden, just, just walking around it like in circles. And it would be a hello, you know, and just walking around. And um, yeah, I, I, I remember those days quite clearly. And I remember that feeling of upset that I couldn't even walk out of my own house. Yeah, definitely scary. That, that was the biggest one, scared, like you've never been scared before, really. Um, uh, emotionally draining, actually, because the emotions you get were just loads of different ones. And you just, even though, you know, you couldn't do anything about it, you just felt emotionally drained. Um, and unhappy, I think, unhappy, really quite miserable. It changed because you knew you could go out, but you actually didn't really want to go out. Um, you were, I was very still scared. Um, I still had my shopping delivered. Um, my son was still taking his clothes off, um, putting them by the washing machine. And because nothing had really been ruled in or ruled out, even at those, that stage so everything was um like, like a bubble kit you know you were very conscious of everything um we did manage to go um down to cornwall we were still reigning in everything we didn't feel what we could take risks we still felt little bubbles you know yeah Everything was aimed at Christmas, really, but we knew because my dad's vulnerable and my mum's over 75. So with him vulnerable and her over 75, we knew that we weren't going to have a normal Christmas anyway, even though they were saying at that stage, even where we were, you could. And then right near um, to the, the knockings, they said you couldn't. But we had prepared ourselves for that. We, um, we went, my dad set up a gazebo in his garden and we used to go down quite regularly um, to his gazebo and sit outside. He even bought an outside heater to, to, to warm the area up so we didn't get cold. Uh, but we would just go literally in as many layers, hats, scarves and whatever. I had a big sign on the door from the PH Association saying someone's vulnerable here please, you know, knock, leave stuff at the door and then walk away and whatever. Um, and, you know, yeah, all our food, my husband would bring it in and he would clean it down and then only when it was clean would I put it away. So, yeah, we were back to doing all those things. I was very lucky that um, I managed to get um, a vaccine at the end of January. We had to go up into London to St Thomas's Hospital um, but yeah, I managed to get one and because he was there and they had some left over, they gave him a vaccine. But even with that vaccine, 
we were still, um, yeah, we, it still didn't feel right. Well, actually, I, I, I had my fourth vaccine in February this year, 2022. And um, three weeks later, I actually caught COVID. And, you know, it was really scary to, to, you know, even though you knew you'd had your vaccines and you knew that there were things that they could give you. And they, they kept saying to me, you are so lucky. You had your vaccine three weeks ago. You couldn't be more protected than that because it's kicked in and it's fresh. And um, I had it and I had it bad. But after that, things did sort of change for me because where I would go out and I just literally wouldn't hug, wouldn't touch, wouldn't go near people. Once I knew I'd had it, I did feel this sort of safety net around me that I could do more things now. I had, not did I, only did I have four injections, but I'd actually had COVID as well. So I did start to do things. It was the first time I went shopping in two years. And that, that was a real surreal experience because you were there and you wanted to be there, but you were still still worried, still, you know, you still had your mask on, you were still keeping away from people. My specialist PH team, I've always felt are there, they're at the end of the phone, so that's brilliant. Uh, we, I've done many, many Zoom calls, so they weren't ever reduced in number. They were still three monthly. Um, they were just on a Zoom. Um, they uh, suggested we don't have the blood test every month, which we were having because of the medication. So they said that could go to, to three monthly. Um, but I, I remember that being scary, just having to go to my doctor's surgery just for my blood test. Um, when I knew everyone would be doing everything they could for me to make me safe. But I remember thinking, Phew, this is really scary, yeah. Positives from the last couple of years have been uh, we all had dinner as a family at the same time eating together and that was lovely. Um, we played lots of cards as a family which we didn't really do before um, just because everyone was never in at the same time. Um, the other positive thing is that from three monthly blood tests we now only have one so and that's carried on um i just i, d I do like the the warmth that we felt although you forget the scary bit the warmth of the family at that time i think that i would um maybe not have been so um set in not doing anything I think you know there would have been smaller risks I would have taken um, because I just think yeah why didn't I take those risks but then hindsight's a wonderful thing isn't it the hardest part of the pandemic for me has been the feeling of the loss of all the things I could have done and I wanted to do but I couldn't do I think, um, yeah, if, if you sit down and you think about it, it can make quite sad, really.